Hello, welcome to the virtual launch of Then Again, the past and present of Letterkenny Town. Uh, my name is Kieran Kelly, I wrote the book, and six years ago I, I wrote a, a first book about the history of Letterkenny, entitled uh, Letterkenny Where the Winding Swilly Flows. And when we launched that book in 2014, on the 28th of October 2014, uh, six years ago exactly today, we had over 300 people in Ingrainham Theatre that night for a very special night of launching the book. But it brought people together and it raised a lot of positivity amongst people and they got talking about going up on Letterkenny and it was fantastic. Unfortunately, on, due to COVID-19 restrictions, we can't do that uh, this time. So the next best thing is this virtual launch. So um, I've asked a good friend of mine, uh, Letterkenny poet John Blake, uh, who wrote a poem entitled Main Street Letterkenny in 1952. Uh, I've asked him to launch the book for me today by reading the poem. I've used his poem in my own book just to, to highlight some of the businesses that he remembers growing up in the town of Letterkenny in the 1950s. Uh, this book basically to give you a very brief outline of it just by watching this video here you can see um, it's a full colour book, National Library photographs, I have uh, colourised them and we have zoomed in on them to, to pick up pieces of Letterkenny that we might not have seen before and especially the names of the businesses uh, around the town. And as you can see on the pages here now too, there's a little bit of history about what was located there over the years. It's by no means uh, a full and extensive list of every business that ever existed in Letterkenny. That would be nigh on impossible. But I hope it gives um, a little kind of background to what businesses were aware in the town over the years. Uh, if I've inadvertently left out any businesses uh, in, in Letterkenny in this book, my apologies if it's not an extensive list for that and I meant, did not mean to do that. Um, it's, as I said, it's a kind of a, a positive look at what the businesses were growing up in the town over the years. So then again, the title, you know, it's a play on words, but after a very, very tough year too, it's also a little kind of a nod to, well, things were good then and well, they will be again. Uh, a lot of businesses in Letterkenny have, have gone through a very, very tough 2020 and we're all thinking about you and uh, celebrating you uh, this 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 year now as we're coming up to Christmas and I encourage everyone to watch this to as best they can shop local and support their local businesses. Uh, so there's a couple of thank yous now as well. I'd like to thank Stevie Toy of Logo Picks, a local business who designed not only the cover but the interior for me as well and he did a fantastic job. So logopicks.ie, I would recommend their business to anyone. Also I'd like to thank Brown Printers, the, for uh, very important to me that we print the book locally as best as possible as well and, and they've done a fantastic, fantastic job. For anybody who's unable to uh, to get to the shops to buy the book, it'll be available to purchase also online at letterkennyhistory.com and there's overseas postage available on that too as well as postage around the country, uh, even locally as well. And because of the postage there's, there's a reduced price online too. But it can also be bought uh, locally in the Bookmark in the shopping centre and Bookmark on the main street. Both of them are formerly Easons, but they're now called Bookmark. Also available in Clark's New Seasons, uh, Max Deli, Donegal Stationery, Old Town Stores and Universal Books and any other places as well that might have it as well. Um, thank you very much to, to uh, also to Helena Ferry for proofreading it for me and my fantastic and beautiful wife Olivia uh, for also helping me with it as well. A huge thank you also to the, my generous sponsors who, who assisted with the publication of this book. Without their help, it just wouldn't have been possible. So a sincere thank you to the people at the Letterkenny Reunion, to the businesses of Primerica, Zeus, the Station House Hotel, Tobin's Garage, McGinley's Bar, McGee's Pharmacy, Sister Sarah's Bar, and Divers Hyundai. A sincere thank you to you. Without your help, it would not have been possible. So I hope you enjoy the book. After this video now, it will be officially launched by John Blake. So with all that's left to do now is to pass it over to John. Uh, where you go, John? John, how are you? How are you keeping? Not so bad, Kieran. How are you doing yourself? Not so bad. Thanks so much for doing this. Uh, oh, no problem. Obviously, now I can't do a, a full physical launch, so this is the way we're doing it. Now we're doing it on online, on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, but before uh, uh, we, we do the official launch, I just wanted to kind of, you're, you're a, a, a resident of Letterkenny for many, many years. Can you tell me any kind of memories of, of growing up in the town, any kind of businesses that you remember fondly from your time in Letterkenny? Well, I was born and reared in Letterkenny, so I'm here, but uh, businesses would be, Kelly's would be the main first one I would remember, because my dad drove lorries. And they deliver stuff for Kelly's uh -huh. all over the county. Michael Blake. And, uh, 
I mean, Kelly's Mills and the Timber Yard and all that. Yeah. And uh, the boats coming up to the port, my father emptied them as well. Coal and timber. I used to be on the truck with them most of the time when I was a younger boy, you know. Right. And uh, that'd be one of the main things I would remember. And what about, you know? you, what were your fond kind of memories of, of businesses on the, on the main street? Um, can you on think? the main street, well, mm -hmm. uh, Muscle Toe Cafe, as we called it then, it turned into the Dolphin. But that was a high place that we would meet there in the younger days, we'd get your fish and chips. <laughs> and then you had Flemings then, they made lovely whipped ice cream. Yeah, I heard that. I heard somebody say that before, they says, he says, the, the Flemings for our, ice cream. For dessert on a Sunday, we took a, I would go with a quart jug down to Flemings with two shillings. And I would get a quart jug full of whipped ice cream <laughs> for the dessert. <laughs> My father was very fond of the ice cream, so he got most of it. We got a share. Fleming's ice cream was better than Fullerton's ice cream, was it? Oh, it was Fullerton's. That was harder. That wasn't cooked. <laughs> the one, it's all the difference. <laughs> the best. There was Fleming, Fullerton's was more a solid. I just they put it in a wee cone with a, a spoon. <laughs> Very you good. have penny cones, you have penny cones and three penny cones. Oh, very good. And Fleming's was at the Market Square? Fleming's was in the Market Square. Very good, very good. And and the mistletoe, as you, as you referred to it there, that was also known as later years, became known as the Dolphin Cafe. And that, that's that's right, that turned into the Dolphin Cafe, aye. And Tony's ran that. And, and then it's actually on the site now is where Leonard Watson's menswear is. That's like, right. Say. Yes, that's right, yeah. And what, um, is there any other businesses you can think of off the top of your head that you can fondly recall? Well, Crumbless is shop in the grocery shop in the foot of the town. Mm -hmm. They used to have uh, petrol pumps as well. But my uncle, Joey Blake, he ran that shop. That's right, yeah. And uh, I used to work down there after school on Monday and Tuesday. I used to fill tea and sugar. On Monday, I would get out a 16-stone a bag of sugar. And I would put that into pound bags, two pound bags, and four pound bags. <laughs> and the tea then, I, half of a, what did you call it? Tea chest. The tea came in a big chest. And you filled the half of a tea chest into a quarter pound and half pound bags of tea on a Tuesday. Uh -huh. And Wednesday, he went out to the country with a van out through Glen Swally and around there doing deliveries and selling groceries and all that. On Thursday, I would go to the Burma and collect all the orders from all the houses in the Burma. And he would put the orders up on Friday morning. And the van would deliver all the groceries to the Burma on Friday evening and Saturday morning. It <laughs> was good fun, I can tell you. Yeah. And so you're you're saying so that uh, that was where, where Cromwell's were. That was the corner of of what's known as Larkins Lane. Now Nell, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, house is away and all that. Nell, it's right. the Eilie Lane. It's not. It's not Larkins. Eilie Lane. Lane. That's right. I. <laughs> Rosie McKay's pub was the other side of the top. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Uh -huh. And and so on your on your mother's side too. Your mother was Larkin, and she was the there. mother of Larkin. Yeah, she wanted the bakery crowd. Yes. And so she, her father was John G. Larkin, the town clerk in the, in the, in the town. John G. Larkin, that's correct. Yes. You, you, you uh -huh. come, I'm you called come after him. <laughs> You're I'm John G. Blake. <laughs> <laughs> and then so, so you so you grew up in the Burma as well. So so from yeah, I was born in the back road, and then we moved over to Bump Coils, Lower Main Street. Now that's where Annie's Flower Shop is now. Yes. With a flat upstairs there. And Bump, he was a cattle dealer. Yes. He was an uncle of my father's. But there was no way to the backyard for Bump except down through the house, down through the hall. Mm -hmm. And he would come at the middle of the night, maybe with two cattle from a fair, and you'd hear the door opening, and Bump would be battering the two cattle down <laughs> through the hall out to the backyard. And they would remain there for, they'd remain there for the night. Uh -huh. And maybe at six o'clock, I'd be heading for another fair with these two cattle, and you'd hear the roars and shouts. I'm getting the cattle up through the room, up through the hall again, out onto the main street to get walking off to the next fair. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so there wasn't much sleep there. But then, we, yeah, we got a house in the Burma then in about 1947. We moved up there, and I've been there. Been there ever since. 
over 40 years in the Burma. And then, um, the, so some, some people might not realize the, the way it's called the Burma. Because some people, because unless you're a townie, it's officially known as Ireland Donald. So, so yeah, it was, built during the, it was built during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Burma Road is a famous part of the war in the Far East. Mm -hmm. And somebody decided that that was the Burma Road. <laughs> and we got the name of the Burma Road from that. And you're, you're, you're a pure Apache, are you? You're, you're oh, definitely. Oh, one of the originals. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, John, thanks so much. Well, the, the reason that uh, in particular I wanted you to, I've asked you to launch the book um, today is because I've used a, a lovely poem that you've written uh, in, in my own book. Uh, the poem is Main Street Letter Kenny in 1952. And I've taken yeah. your own book here, which is a fantastic book of poems and songs and, and, and stories. And it's it's a it's filled with loads of beautiful poetry about Letterkenny. Um, but the, the one that stuck out to me was was Main Street Letterkenny in 1952, and it mentions so many of the businesses that I've mentioned in my own book, uh, which is now launched and so today. So if you'd like to take your time there and have a little read of it, and uh, hopefully everyone will enjoy it. <laughs> Main Street Letterkenny in 1952. I'm standing in the market square where everything is new as my memory transports me back to 1952. The traffic travels up and down, no one-way system then, and folks have time to stop and chat and call each other friend. The groceries are purchased from Jack Harris and Jim Clark, James O'Brien and Houston's, and you do not pay to park. Each customer is welcomed with a greeting and a smile, and a seat is often offered if you want to rest a while. Woolly Boyle sells holy pictures and statues of the saints, McGee's and Stuart the chemists, pure ailments and complaints. Mrs. Houston's tea rooms and Chef Green's restaurant can satisfy your appetite no matter what you want. Patterson's and Kelly's and McGlynn supply the meat while Dobson's and McFadden's put shoes upon your feet. For your clothes you go to Benson's, Mahoney's and Knees, and in Griffin's or Jim Foodies, you'll find a suit to please. For Delft, tin baths and hardware, to Vaughan's you must go, while Curry's and O'Donnell's will fix your radio, and Malsey's will supply you with a lovely pram or cot, and Eddie Knox, the tax man, might step in and take the lot. <laughs> McLennan's little jeweler shop sells watches, clocks, and rings. Being Coney's serve you fish and chips, that's good enough for kings. James Cairns makes lustre hair oil and polish for your car. And the buses bring the people in from places near and far. For ice cream cones to Fullerton's and Fleming you must go. Rushes, Peoples's, McMoneagle's are sweetie shops I know. The men all head for Jerry's for a haircut and a shave, while the ladies go to Una's for a set or body wave. Charlie Knocker Doherty will mend your boots and shoes in his cozy little workshop where you hear the latest news. A woodbine stuck between his lips and a mouth that's full of nails. He can chat and smoke and hammer with a name that never fails. The rainbow and your corner bars, McCool's up on the hull, Keyes's, Boyle's and Harris's, in my mind I see them still. And Wooly Dillon's little snug where the ladies used to go to sip their gin and tonics so their husbands would not know. Old Horabin takes photographs. Brian Walsh will test your sight. O'Leary pulls your aching teeth while Fenton's fix your light. The travelers stop overnight in O'Donnell's Grand Hotel and the Ulster and Hibernian banks will guard your money well. With Eddie crossing driving two black horses through the town, McConnell or Mc, 
McFadden tears will carry you to Cornwall's holy ground. And as the funeral bell is tolled and St. Eunan's may despire, the men will stop, remove their caps, and say a little prayer. But many years have passed since then, and our town began to grow. The main street is a different place from the one we used to know. But memories keep flooding back whenever townies meet, as we recall the good old times we spent on our main street. <laughs> thank you, John, so much. That was lovely. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. I'm using that poem in, in my own book. And hopefully it'll help people jog people's memories and take them back to to, to a, an old letter, Kenny, that they all know and love. Thank you so much. So that's all. Uh, we'll keep it going. So I think this is now we'll say that the book is officially launched by John Blake. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much and take care. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye. Sweet letter, Kenny. 